Good morning, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a great weekend so far. Uh, this weekend is my weekend to work here at the Winder Water Treatment Plant. So here I am. I'm at work. It's been a busy morning so far. Uh, alarms going off here and there, and but everything's we're we're in good shape here at the plant. But uh, that being said, I have a short message that I want to bring to you today. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the Book of Psalms, chapter 121. We're going to read the entire chapter, but it's only eight verses, so it's not that much. We're going to have a key verse today. Uh, Psalms 121, 1 through 8, starting at verse 1, it says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I love every bit of this, of what this says here, but the verse that my topic, this message is based upon today the key verse is Psalm 121, verse 3. And he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we're thankful for this day that you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I ask you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today, God. That when chaos and circumstances all around us, when the enemy sets, a, sets forth a trap before us, and we accidentally spring the trap that you will not allow us to be trapped. You will not suffer our foot to be moved today. And we thank you, Lord, for that, God. And I ask that you would use me today as a tool, as a vessel. Don't let me stumble over my words, but let the words that proceed from my mouth come from you, God. And we love you today, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's message has a long title, you know, Typically, I don't have the most fancy, extravagant messages. And this, and the title, this title's not extravagant either, but it's long. And it says, "God, my." The title of this message is, "God will not suffer thy foot to be moved." God will not suffer thy foot to be moved. In the scripture reading, we read that our help comes from the Lord, and I believe that any Bible believing Christian has read that scripture, quoted that scripture to others. We all have this fundamental understanding as Christians that God does indeed go before us. And we know that he will indeed fight for us. We know that he will protect us. And we also know that any weapon formed against us shall not prosper. Amen. We know no weapon formed against us shall not prosper. We've said this in the past. He didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed. He just said it wouldn't prosper. And there's something I want to focus on right here, though, that is simply when the psalmist David says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Amen. He that keeps you will not sleep. And this is our focus of the message today. What does he mean he won't allow our foot to be moved? Well, I think you could think of this as an unsuspecting victim that, you know, they get caught in a trap. Just as we, we you know, we've preached this before that the enemy is looking for any way he can to trap us. He likes to trick us and bait us and then comes and, and then here comes the trap. And I'm not a hunter, and I am no way saying this is right, this is wrong. But I want to talk about a certain trap for just a few moments. I'm not going to take much of your time today. But I, and I had to do some research on this particular trap. because I said, I'm not a hunter. I don't know anything about it. But this particular trap is for, is for raccoon hunting. And this particular trap is called a raccoon cuff. The raccoon cuff is a type of trap that is a tube that is filled with bait. There's a spring on the top that locks the animal in place once it's triggered. It is activated when the animal reaches in to get the bait inside. It will hold the animal there. Hear that now. It will hold the animal there. Once the trap is triggered, the raccoon is trapped, and it ain't going anywhere. 
And you know what? This is what I think about in our own lives. This is what it looks like in our own lives. There's a trap that gets set before us. You know, it may look good. <coughs> Excuse me. It smells good. It just has to taste good. And I just got to have it. And when it comes up and when we come up and we put our hands in the, the, in the trap and before we have a second chance, we, we, we've triggered the trap and we get caught in the trap. The tri we triggered it and we are trapped. However, we are at raccoons. You know, as I said earlier, this trap, it will hold a raccoon in place and it can't get away. There's no way the raccoon can get away. But let me tell you today that the God we serve, he makes a way. When the trap's there, he makes a way for us to get free. Amen. We have this promise that when there is a trap that's about to trap us, that our feet will not be trapped. Our feet will not be moved. Amen. This is a promise. There is a promise from God that he will protect us spiritually and he will protect us physically. Even when we slip up, even when we mess up, God is there to protect us from the traps that, all, that are all around us today. He will not suffer our feet to be moved. The Lord will pre preserve thee from all evil. Nothing evil will come near your dwelling if you trust God. And that, wants, and that makes me want to come to my next point, that God is in control. Let's turn into the book of Romans, chapter 8. Let's read three verses right here. Uh, and we've, we read these verses a lot. We read these. I preach these. I love these. I agree with these, these, these verses here. But starting at verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So that means when we stick our hand in the trap, when we, we see the bait and we think, yes, that's what I got to have in that trap, and it clamps down on our hands, guess what? The God that we serve is still going to protect us. The God we serve is still in control. The God we serve is still sitting on the throne today. And that, I can tell you right now that there's nothing in this on this earth <clears throat> that catches God unaware. Do you believe that today, that there is nothing on this earth there's nothing that we're going to face there's nothing that we're going to go through that he doesn't already know there's nothing i may see or, or face that he's not been there already amen he's already been there wherever i may go when he, he's already seen the trap and he knows i'm a human that i may stick my hand in the trap but he's not going to suffer my foot to be moved he's not going to allow me to be trapped in there he offers a way out he offers us a way out of our sin. He offers us a way out of all these things that are meant to destroy us. He's, he offers us this way because God is in control. He is a protector. He will say, keep us safe. Our strong tower. Amen. John 16, 33. If you're following along, I'll give you just a moment. I need to take a sip real quick. John 16, 33. If you need proof that he's already overcome all these things for us. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There's something here that I think a lot of people that aren't Christians, they don't understand. Some people think that, you know, once you've come to know Jesus, once you start serving Jesus, maybe you've been serving Jesus for many years. There's a lot of times I think, well, even some of us Christians, sometimes we act like we're supposed to just, once we uh, come to know Jesus, that all our troubles are supposed to go away, that there's always just supposed to be good times ahead of us, and there's always, there ain't supposed to be nothing happening to us. But Jesus himself says, right here, Jesus says that in our world, there are going to be times of tribulation. There are going to be times when we will face things. There's going to be times 
where there is a trap set before us. There's going to be times of hardships. But you know what else he said? He didn't just stop there that there's just going to be some tribulation in the world. He didn't just say, hey, uh, children, you're going to face some things. Hey, children. He didn't just say all that. He didn't just say there's going to be bad times. There's going to be bad things to happen. He didn't just stop there. He went on to say, but I'm going to tell you right now to be of good cheer. Come on, somebody that I am to be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. <coughs> Excuse me. He has overcome the sin that's going to try to take you down. He has overcome the depression that may set in when things start to happen to us. He's overcome the struggles that you and I are going to face. He's overcome all this and will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Amen. I'm thankful for that today. You know, hey, we always say he's a way maker. He makes the way when it seems you're trapped. He makes a way when your joy's been stolen from you. He makes a way when there just seems there's no way. I was foolish enough. I stuck my hand in the bait, but now God has a way of setting us free. Amen. He set us free. He's already paid the price for the sin that you and I are going to commit. He's already paid the price. He's already offered us grace and forgiveness. The price was paid the day that he went to Calvary. We all have to, all we have to do now is accept it. Or the price has been paid. I've said it numerous times that it should have been me hanging on the cross. It should have been me with my arms stretched out with a sword through my side, nails through my hands and my wrist and my ankles and my leg. What? It should have been me. But he's not going to suffer us to be moved. My help comes from the Lord. He doesn't sleep. He's always there watching. He's going to preserve us. You know, that's something I like to think, you know, especially here at the water plant, we've got a lot of small systems that we have to constantly keep check on. We've got chemicals that are being fed into the water that we've got to do to test the process. I did a water plant talk on that a couple weeks ago. We've got a computer that shows, that shows me the tank levels. It shows me the flow levels of all the, the filters we've got, the basin levels. It shows me all these things. And we've always said that, you know, if something goes wrong, people want to say this is the operator here that they fell asleep on the job. Ain't, and ain't nobody falling asleep. But, you know, we like to say, you know, uh, asleep at the will. But you know what? That's the way I look at it. That's how God looks at us. I could see him up there looking down, and no, it's not a computer screen, but I could, see, I could picture it. He's looking at every single one of us, keeping an eye on us, seeing the traps, and I'm, I'm going to set him free today. I, I'm going to deliver him today. I'm going to do this today. He makes a way when it seems like there's no way, and I just see, feel that's the way it looks to him. He never sleeps at the wheel. He's always in control. If there's a change that needs to be made, he's going to go make the change. He's not going to suffer our feet to be moved. Now, I want to make this clear right here and right now. That doesn't mean things won't happen. That doesn't mean you're, you're not going to fall into, into temptation sometimes. It doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up, that you're not going to slip up. But it, but it does mean that in these times of temptation, in these times when we slip, in these times that we fall, that he's not going to let us fall over the edge. He's not going to let us fall off the cliff. He's going to reach down and not suffer our foot to be moved. He's going to be there in our time of need. He's never left me forsaken. He's never left me needing or wanting anything. He's always been there for me. And he'll always be there for you. I can speak from personal experience. There's never been a time that I've been, he's left me alone. Even in those times where I felt like it. Even those times where I felt like I got trapped into, in a trap and that, that I was going to be stuck there forever. My hero came walking. My hero was there. And he was not going to suffer my foot to be moved. I didn't have to stay, stay down in the trap. I didn't have to stay there in that lowly place. Amen. He will preserve us from evil. He's going to preserve our soul. And God will not suffer thy foot to be moved today. Lord, we thank you for the state you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you, 
let this message reach the ears, God, that needs to hear, hear this message. If they've been going through something, if they feel like they're trapped in a place of desolation, they feel like there's no way out, if they feel like that they're stuck there, that they'll never make, that there's no light at the end of the tunnel, God, we ask that you today that you will make a way for these people, that you will show these people that you're not going to suffer their foot to be moved, that you're not going to allow them to remain in the trap, that you're there to pull them up from the water, that you're there to pull them up from off the side of the cliff, that you're not going to let them fall too far, that you're not going to let them uh, do, uh, get hurt, God, that you're going to help them, Lord. And we thank you for that today, God. And I ask that anyone under the sound of my voice at this time, God, if you're going through something, that you'll touch them right here and right now, God. If they need salvation, give it. If they need redemption, give it. If they need, if they, if they need deliverance, God, whatever the case may be, Lord, I ask that you will touch them today in your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you got something out of this message today. I, I, I don't want this message to be taken the wrong way, that nothing's ever going to happen. Sometimes things are going to happen to us because God's got to get our attention sometimes. But that's a whole other message. Sometimes things will happen. Sometimes he's just trying to, you know, wake up, call, hey, what are you doing, Chris? What, 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 what in the world? You know, so that things will happen at times and there will be times where you will have to face hardships but he's not going to let our foot be moved we won't be trapped there forever amen it's just something that we will face at times but i have confidence that the god i serve will not suffer my foot to be moved he won't allow me to stay in that lowly desolate place today well i hope you got something out of this i'm uh, sorry it's not a video but i've got too much going on right now well i uh Thank every single one of y'all that watch the, that will watch this later. I hope it touches you. I hope you can use this. But with that being said, well, we love you. God bless you. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.